Thanks for joining me in another video today. If you're thinking about purchasing an electric vehicle, there are some items that are good to know and hopefully helpful when making the transition to an EV. For this video, I'm going to stick to the basics, just the stuff you need to know. I have also made an EV101 infographic for North America in both English and Spanish that you can look at or share with others. You can find that on my website at www.kaizev.com. Today to help me with this video is a BMW i3. Learn more about this EV through my BMW i3 review video. An electric vehicle runs on electricity, of course. It has a motor with only one moving part instead of an internal combustion engine, which has many moving parts. They use large battery packs, usually with lithium ion batteries. They don't need oil changes and only require very minimal maintenance, usually just the tires. All right, let's start off with charging. Electric vehicle charging can be summed up in three levels. Level one uses a regular wall outlet like you would find in your home. It's slow, but you can get 30 to 40 miles of range overnight. It's enough for most people's daily commute and some people use this as their main source of charging. Level two uses a more powerful wall outlet that's used for something like an electric stove or clothes dryer. This is what most people use to charge their EV at home since it's a good mix of cost and charging speed. Typically, you can get a full charge overnight this way. Level two chargers can also take the form of a wall-mounted unit. Level three are fast chargers that you might see in a parking lot. These chargers are made for long distance traveling. They can typically charge your car from zero to 80% in under half an hour, depending on the model of your car. When doing your daily commutes and in city driving, you will most likely only need to charge from a level two charger at your home. If you are doing a road trip or traveling a long distance, then you'll be using level three chargers. Some workplace and apartment complexes have a level two charging station set up for their employees or residents, which is very convenient. In North America, there are few charging connector standards that electric vehicles use. EVs and plug-in hybrids use J1772, also known as the J connector, Type 1, CCS, Chatamo, and the Tesla connector. All cars in the US have the J connector on it except for Tesla vehicles. It's the most common one you'll find. Don't worry though, if you're looking to get a Tesla, they do come with an adapter so you can use it. With this connector, you can charge at level one or two. The CCS connector is for fast charging. Automakers like Jaguar, Volkswagen, General Motors, BMW, Ford, Hyundai, and a few others support CCS. Chatamo is on its way out, but you can still find it around. It's a level three standard that's used in Japanese cars, such as a Nissan Leaf and the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. The Tesla connector is used by Tesla vehicles. It supports level one, two, and three charging. An electric vehicle contains battery packs, which are made up of many lithium ion battery cells. Over time, the capacity of the battery will slowly reduce. A battery's condition is called state of health. Don't let this stress you out. I go into more detail on battery degradation in another video titled, Battery Degradation in My Tesla and Other EVs, if you want to learn more about this topic. There are several things you can do to maximize the life of an electric car battery, but one of the ones I wanted to highlight is the state of charge. It's important not to let your car sit at 100% or 0% charge for a long period of time. One of the common recommendations is to keep an average daily charge of 20% to 90%. Electric vehicles require minimal maintenance. They do not require oil changes, oil filters, or spark plug replacements. Some common items that require servicing in EVs are tire and wheel care, windshield wiper, and windshield fluid, air filters, and air conditioning service. Also, with regenerative braking, EVs will have less wear on the brakes it is truly nice not having to worry about so much maintenance on electric vehicles. It saves money and time. There are several charging stations from different companies around the country. There are two apps I recommend using for any type of EV. These apps are called PlugShare and a Better Route Planner. PlugShare is my go-to charging app to find charging stations nearby. You can filter out results by looking for a charging station that is free or has a cost, type of charging, network, and charging connector. People can also leave comments for each charger. I usually find PlugShare helpful when booking hotels. That way I can search what kind of chargers are available when I travel. Having a charger at a hotel isn't necessary, but it's a nice perk. The second app is a better route planner. This app is very powerful when calculating the details of an EV trip. It lets you select your vehicle, the departure state of charge, the weather, or what percentage you want your battery to be when you arrive. You can enter a lot of detailed information to customize and test your trip. 
Then when you finally calculate your route, it gives you which charger you need to stop at, for how long, the cost, and what percentage your battery needs to be. Other than these two apps, charging stations usually allow you to use a network membership card to activate a charge, or you can use their mobile app to initiate a charge. You might end up with a few charging apps downloaded on your phone. For Tesla superchargers, you just simply connect your car and the cost is automatically charged to your account. The cost of charging at a charging station can range from free to a few dollars. You may find free level 2 chargers in hotels and shopping plazas. A charging station can charge you based on kilowatt hours, which is energy used, or time-based billing. It just depends on what charger and what area you live in. When charging at home, it always is billed for the energy used. It's typically cheapest to charge at home, and your utility company may even have a special plan for charging your EV. Public charging has a few etiquette rules that are important to follow. Many but not all electric vehicle charging parking spaces are labeled as EV charging parking only. These stations are reserved for cars that are charging. If you don't need to charge, you shouldn't park there. You don't want to take the spot where someone else might need to charge. Unfortunately, there are times when non-electric cars park in these charging spaces. There is a term for this known as ISYNC, which means internal combustion engines blocking a charging spot. If there's another car charging, make sure you wait your turn. Also, don't litter around charging stations, but you shouldn't do that anywhere, really. Well, those are most of the items I think will be beneficial for you to know. About that infographic I spoke on earlier, I summarized some of the components I talked about today, including charging and charging connectors. You can find them at www.kaizev.com under resources. If you're a current EV owner, what tips would you give a potential first-time EV owner? If you're thinking about having an EV as your next car, great. If you have any questions that I didn't cover in the video, let me know in the comments below. Congrats, you graduated EV 101. So where's my cap? Nice. If you're thinking about buying a Tesla, be sure to use my referral code in the description below. Thanks for spending time with me today. Make sure to subscribe for more EV content and follow me on social media at Kai's EV and Kai's Tesla. Kai's my dog. That's all for now, and happy charging. Yay! What was that? Congratulations, you graduated EV 101. Here's your hat.